Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, <laughs> last round. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's so cool. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. Really excited about this video, talking all about Mark 12s with a good buddy of mine. Should be a good time. Real quick, a couple announcements and uh, things I wanna say before we get into it. First off, we got a cool sponsor and that is Works Holsters. Guys, if you guys have struggled finding a sweet holster for your pistol with a certain light combination, you gotta check out Works Holsters. That's W-E-R-K-Z Holsters. They've got over 2,400 different combinations between popular pistols and lights. So this right here, for example, is for 1911 and 2011s with Surefire X300 Ultras. Here we have a threaded Nighthawk. No problem, nice and tight. That same holster, X300 Prodigy Double Stack 2011 from Springfield Armory, no problem as well. And then we go back to a single stack 1911 with a TLR1 from Streamlight. They've got options for that as well. Again, that's Works Holsters. I'll be sure to put a link in the description to check them out. Go through their configurator, tell them what pistol you have, what light you have, and get yourself a nice Works Holster. Real quick, another thing I wanna tell you guys about is a little project I personally have been working on for a little while, and to be honest, it is long overdue. I'll make this short so we can get to the Mark 12s. Given where I'm at with this platform and everything, I've been wanting to share with you guys a lot of things that this platform and others don't let me. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, there's a lot of things like really good deals that I get offered through some partners that I have in this industry. Um, and I can't share that because these platforms don't allow that. With that being said, I recently started a newsletter. I know that doesn't sound sexy off the bat because I'm myself and I'm subscribing from more newsletters than I'm subscribing to because that's just spam to me for the most part. But guys, I think I put together a good one. I'll put a link in the description as well to sign up to the Texas Thinking newsletter. By signing up to that newsletter, I'll do my very best to keep you guys posted about on a weekly basis on the best deals I can find, whether that's on 9mm 5.56 or firearms themselves or accessories, all the stuff that I can't send over in the video link, Facebook, Instagram, you guys get it. So this is something I've been working on for a little while. I think it's finally dialed in. So link in the description to join the Texas Plinking newsletter. I promise you guys, sincerely, this is personally me putting all these together and I'm not gonna spam you guys because I know how personal your inbox is. Now, with all of that said, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking coming at you guys from my kitchen. This is a little different, but <laughs> it's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, just to tell you guys about the order of this video, we already went out and shot uh, quite a bit of Mark 12 content. So that's gonna get enrolled in this video. First off, this is my buddy Dylan. What's going on, Dylan? What's up, Brandon? You guys might recognize him, episode two of the Long Range Challenge. He attempted it with his Mark 12 Mod 1. We're gonna talk about three Mark 12s, O, 1, and H. When was the year like the Mark 12 really came to? Was it like early so, 2000s or late 90s? I believe it was uh, like a collaboration of the military with Crane. You know, mm -hmm. they got into this, hey, we need a, a kind of a do-it-all infantryman rifle that um, can kind of do it all, but reach out and touch still a being bit. at the end of the day accurate the ar platform yes uh because now we just expect free float barrels Correct. if you don't have it it's considered kind of retro yeah so this when this came out it was like a, oh it's free floated like that wasn't a, a free big floated thing. barrel uh in early a long, 2000s yeah this was like early 2000s yeah so. and an 18 inch barrel as well when the standard carbine was a 16 inch or so mm -hmm. i guess that's really all we'll dive into the history of it it was really like an abundance of lowers they had and the mark 12 magic really is okay upgrade the trigger, but it's really in the upper, accurizing mm -hmm. it. Douglas one in seven twist barrels, 18 inches. Uh, so one in seven, obviously, to carry heavier bullets, 77 grain, ideally. And that brings us to ammo as well. Yes. This little elusive box right here. Mm -hmm. This was when Black Hills developed a round specifically for this Mark 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was the Mark 262. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that said though, uh, before we even talk about the rest of this, let me try to stay on track here. Uh, we'll talk about kind of my rifles and how they're not exactly clone correct and how that's a whole rabbit hole to go down as well. But the Mod O, uh, in short, A2 fixed stock, A2 grip, PRI, carbon fiber handguard, 18 inch barrel. So that's that. And then your Mod 1 mm -hmm. is practically that without the PRI rail uh, riser. Uh, so it sits more traditional. It's mm -hmm. just mounted right on the upper receiver. A Knight's Armament quad rail. But once again, 18 inch barrel. Traditionally, the A2 stock yep. on there. I used to have an A2 stock on mine. Um, a couple years ago, I popped the B5 stop mod stock on there. Mm -hmm. I like it, it makes it a little shorter. Uh, but shooting this today was 
it was it was it delays totally it up a different. Bit. Like I really like the recoil management on the A2 stock. Then the later later iteration, with you don't see all that much. And no, this is not clone correct. And we'll dive into that a little bit. The mod H starts looking a little bit more like the O with the PRI carbon fiber handguard, the raised rail once again. The big change here though is they almost always had a collapsible stock uh, and they have a 16 inch barrel. You started off with your mod one. You guys wanna see some mod one content? You're about to. This is <laughs> Dylan's. Yeah, so I, when I was building this, I, I was contracting over in Afghanistan and I was like, I want to go all in on this Mark 12, have it be exactly the way it was issued. Um, I had a friend that I served with and on my first deployment, so it was his second deployment, my first deployment, I saw him with this exact rifle, but with the, the A2 stock, mm -hmm. but he had the can, everything, um, just the exact same rifle, but he had the like correct Leopold scope instead okay. of the uh, Night Force. Um, this is a Night Force NSX. 2.5 to 10. Oh, but, dude, we have to talk about the suppressor. Though. Oh yeah, the AEM-5. Slide it off here and it just screws on it. And uh, what is it, the Opsync collar? It mm -hmm. comes with a little pro a protective yep. um, little thread on there. If you're not gonna run the can, you yeah. can thread so on. Yeah, so it threads way up here, but it really locks in, not by the threads really, but by the taper mm -hmm. design. And you can see where it wears. Oh, yeah. I'm probably For not sure. there, but it, it, it locks in real solid. Real well, honestly, uh, I'm not telling you what to do with your own ears and hearing protection, but for a 5.56 full speed, pretty much hearing safe to me. But you guys do what you will. <laughs> um, anyway, deadly accurate. You got a specific made suppressor for it, a specific made ammo for mm -hmm. it. Uh, so, I mean, traditionally, you can expect these things to certainly be under one MOA. Um, I've also shot around with the Black Hills civilian loading, the open tip match 77 grain and tip match king. Now we've been having a lot of luck with mm -hmm. IMI Razor Core 77 grain, um, and these are the but to hull points, mm -hmm. match ammo. So uh, in any case, it's hard to uh, shoot poorly with any 77 grain ammo out of a Mark 12. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that being said, there's the quick parts list and all that stuff. Let's talk about some shooting. Uh, we're gonna showcase it. Dylan, you did some shooting at 526 yards, 770 yards, 950 yards, and we even just gave it a little jab, why not? Because a thousand yards on a 10 inch plate just to do it. We had a couple little explosive targets on some of those and sometimes they went off, sometimes they didn't. But uh, let's play some of that footage real quickly. That's a hit. I thought I saw powder from my target, but it didn't explode. <laughs> Where did you slap up the little exploder? Is it on the one head? One on the head and then one like uh, pretty much center of the target. I'll, I'll try and go center for the head and see if I can hit that. All right, I'm looking at it. Dude, you, you freaking hit it. I, I saw something fall off of the target. Dude, okay, so they're not exploding, but... Maybe I'll try the, the orange one. Yeah, okay, let's go for that. Those are good hits, though. Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, you know what I'm that thinking? That was sick. I'll go for the... What is that? The, is that an 8-inch plate or 10-inch? That's 8-inch. Eight eight inch. Inch. I'll go for that little guy. Hit. Nice. Hit. All right. I'm at... 7.8 for my dope on elevation, and then I did uh, one mil left. Let's see where that goes with the wind. You see it? I did not see my just was top it? right. You are top like right? half a plate to the right, maybe a plate or half a plate high. <laughs> I love this gun. Hell yeah! I'm, like, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get rid of impact for you. It's hard to tell. I saw the powder come off on that target that time, so you must have been pretty close to it. Damn, no, still no pop on that explosion. No explosion, that's a good hit. Um, okay, go for that uh, circle then. All right. Oh! Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Dude, hell Dude, yeah. I'm surprised that's not like knocking it off the chain or breaking the chain or something. That looked pretty centered. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> dude, what's, dude, that was loud. What's funny is you already pieced apart that target, but it's still good enough to explode. Damn. Yeah. Dude. Should you push out a little further? I just think if you hit the, uh, if you go for the silhouette, there's enough dirt around it we could see it. You want me to go for the one on the right or the top Let's silhouette? Let's go for the top one. Okay. I think that'll give me the best chance to see a miss. Oh. No way. Hey, that's not too bad. 
Well, I didn't see where the impact was. Um, you are probably a good two, maybe two and a half targets right, and maybe half a target high. Okay. All left, right. left, over You're right over shoulder. Our right shoulder, yep. I oh. Hit on the steel. I couldn't. I didn't even see the hit through here, but that's why I stayed quiet. All right, let me go one more. Yep. You see that? Yeah. Even with the bottom, about a play eight and a half right. Yeah, you feel that wind whipping right yeah. now, huh? Yeah, it's moving out there. Yeah, I'll just go, uh, should I go, I'm gonna go for the orange 8 inch, it's the easiest to see. That's a 10 inch now. Oh, 10 inch, yep. okay. Uh, so in the middle yeah. of those uh, circles. Hit. Hit. Ding, ding. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just high left. By about a plate and a half each way. Hit. Oh yeah. Dude. Oh, <laughs> last round. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's so cool. I'm gonna go for the orange one. Okay. It's a little easier to see. Gotcha. Oh, dude. Way high right. You're a mill right. A mill right? Yeah. Probably about 1.3 high. Ooh, I saw that. Just right. Low. Yeah, you're low in between the two targets. Oh, just right of it, dude. Could have nicked. Left. Left. I think that just snuck under it. No copy. It really? Granted, the scope for shooting out to a thousand yards or nine. You're on the 50. tail end of it. It's kind of right? hard out there, especially with the mirage and stuff, but it's totally doable. Like you'll see, you know, you've seen in the. At the same time, the, you can say the same thing for the cartridge. The effective range of the cartridge is probably the effective range of that optic, too. Yeah. So everything kind of happens together. Yeah, and there was a um, big difference from 950 to 1000 we saw today. All right, going back in time to the Mod O. This is, once again, 18 inch barrel, same suppressor, by the way. This is a Vortex Viper PST Gen 1. They're on the Gen 2s now. This is a 2.5 to 10 uh, by 32, I think. But it's a first focal plane, zero stop, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I think the proportions look very cool, Mark 12-like, but I actually like the glass. And it does have parallax, which helps a lot. From 526 to 950, mm -hmm. did some at 1,000 off camera, but uh, I have decided this is gonna be the rifle I use on the next episode of the long range challenge. So fingers crossed, I had good a luck, little, <laughs> I got a, yeah, good luck, I need that. I got a little bit of free practice and trying to get the home field advantage by shooting it today. Yeah, it's gonna be tough, that's all I know. But from 526 to 950 yards, it was doing really, really well. Had a, a few strings of fire that were really great. We could talk about it or we could just show it. So take a look. You want to go for the 8-inch? Eight 8-inch, eight yeah. Yeah, I'll be able to tell where you hit there. That's it. Hit. Mm, I think that was off to the left. Nice. Cool. I'm at one mil left for win. Okay. Let's go for that uh, silhouette middle in the high. Right. All right. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank God, because I didn't see anything. Good shit. Nice. Oh, hit. I, yeah, you you hit you hit the exploder, dude. It just like 
busted into powder and fell okay. down. Let's try that again. Hit. Hit. Right underneath the target. No copy on that one. Same. Well, as you guys saw, um, it's very, very capable. Um, it got to the point where the misses, I just knew that it was on shooter as well. But then it got to the point as well at like 950 yards where I would hold a consistent point of aim and I would just deal with the fact that my spread was gonna be what it's gonna be. As I was discussing mm -hmm. on the way back from the range, if I'm shooting a thousand yards with some precision 338 Lapua and I miss by half a target left, half target being the 10 inch plate, I'm gonna adjust that. Whereas if you're shooting a Mark 12 at that distance, you just kind of have to send a second shot. You're gonna have that spread already. Mm -hmm. It's a, Again, it's a 77 grain, um, 556 at 950 yards. So we're asking a lot for it. So that is my clone or inspiration build of a Mod O. We've got the barrel and PRI made that rifle as far as the uh, upper receiver is concerned. Um, trigger though, not clone correct. That is a LaRue MBT2S. I think they're great for the price. You know, if you're under hundred bucks for a really nice two stage trigger. So again, not clone correct. Bipods, didn't even discuss that. We got Harris bipods on the mm -hmm. O and the one. Atlas over there. Yep. There we go. Then the H moves over to an Atlas bipod. Different ways to adjust the length and all that kind of stuff. And I got this on an American Defense uh, QD mount. So you can just go ahead and shave some forward weight off real, real quickly. So that's kind of cool. Definitely not clone correct here, but I'll still call it a Mark 12 Mod H. Why? Because this is a complete rifle built from PRI and they list it as a Mark 12 Mod H on their website. So get mad at them, not me. Not clone correct on the optic either, but man, I made a video on this uh, last winter and I called it my favorite AR-15 I own and I was only like two or three mags mm -hmm. into it. I'm quite a bit more uh, rounds down range with it now and still holds true. Uh, definitely a dual rifle for me. 16 inch barrel, AR-15, classable stock. And this is a Vortex Razor HD Gen 3, one to 10. No, at 10 power, it's not a specifically designed long range reticle and long range scope. But tell you what, it's doable. It's doable. Uh, again, off camera, should have recorded it, but did end up getting a hit at a thousand mm -hmm. on the 10 inch plate mm -hmm. after 16 rounds, I will say, full transparency. Last, shot, right? yeah. Last round, I loaded 16 rounds of the mag. And I will say though, all the rounds though, were within the frame. So that was impressive enough to see. I was really limited more on, I think optic than I was um, 16 inch barrel what kind of surprised me was this one was a, it seemed a little more accurate than your uh -oh. 18 inch, yeah your th yeah. that 18 inch oh, oh. oh. okay nice okay Dude, I think I, what was the sound on that no sound I right i didn't hear anything okay let's go for that eight inch all right hit right over the right edge hit I can see the vapor trail. Hit. <laughs> Being money now. <laughs> and, uh, dude, 10 power is just not enough. Yeah, dude. Okay. All right, good luck, man. Thank you. Let's go for that silhouette in the middle. Okay. I'm on it. Oh. Hey, that's hey. not bad. Just right over the left shoulder. All right, a little too much on wind by a little bit. You're like half a target high over the left shoulder. Did you see that one? Bottom? Yeah, right at the bottom of the target. Hit. Left? Yeah, it was right over the left shoulder. Right over the top of the head. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Just high right.
Oh, just left. Left dude. edge. Just left. As you guys saw, it's a repeater. Dylan got behind it as well at 950. Man, what do you think of it? Oh, that, yeah, no, I liked it. I really like the size of this one too, a little bit shorter. Um, yeah. So kind of tagging off like the do it all rifle. You were saying this would probably be one of the ones like if you could pick one. I did it, say that, man. Uh, and before this rifle, it'd probably be like the Mod O, but um, it's weird in the sense that in my entire gun collection, I don't know if it's my favorite because I really like bolt actions. But at the same time, if I could only have one rifle, it is this one. Once again, you got a 16 inch barrel, a long suppressor, but it's on the you know over barrel design on that taper. Mm -hmm. So really we got the baffles right about there. Yeah. Dimensionally, very, very cool, but you can rip off the suppressor, rip off the bipod, and it's just a- The do it all rifle. It is to I me. Mean, a thousand yards with 5.56, we'll say. I, 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 like after today, I'm like, I think I was telling you, I was like 950, I think is like kind of the max, like range I'm, um, I would be comfortable with at. your, with my O and with your mod one, I think there's this point on the small torso at 950, we were getting like three, four in a yeah, row. Yeah, like it was, and then 50 yards just makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. It's crazy. But in short, man, uh, Mark 12 is an accurized AR-15. The clone world can uh, get on you pretty good if you don't build it clone correct, but that's where I like the kind of in between. Go and get a Mach 12. Uh, an inspired build. Oh God, should I bring out the abomination? Bring her, bring her out. This is what started it for me. <laughs> this used to, this started out as a Bushmaster AR-15. And then I think I went online, this was like four years ago and I just bought a free float quadrail. Not mm. from Knights, of course not. It looks uh, like it though. It, <laughs> eh, ish. And I just bought all the parts to make it look like, honestly, Marcus Luttrell's Mod 1, which is your rifle. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, oh, I was, I think that's so cool. So I put together this and I called it a Mark 12 and people lit me up. So I learned early how the Mark 12 community is or the clone community. Mm -hmm. So I just started calling this the Mach 12. It's a Bushmaster AR-15. Once again, a LaRue trigger, a no name quad rail, a Nikon optic, a broomstick that's not made from Knights. Um, anyway, nothing, an AAC, AAC muzzle there device. There we go. That's an OG one too. Huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nothing on this is clone correct, but I'll tell you what, it shoots good. It's not even a high end barrel. It's a ballistic advantage, mm -hmm. one in seven twist, yeah. 18 inch. And this is what started it for me. And I'm like, holy crap, I love this Mark 12 thing. Or really in this case, it's more SPR or special purpose rifle, mm -hmm. which brings me to, I guess, the closing statement on all this. You could go get a Mark 12, make it clone correct. But the whole ethos of it is just an accurized AR-15. Mm -hmm. And you can just do that by just putting a nice optic on a free-floated AR with a nice trigger, nice barrel, 16-inch, mm -hmm. 18-inch, whatever you want. And at that point, you don't have to stick to any rules to make it mm -hmm. a Mark-12 clone. Go make a SPR, a uh, special purpose rifle, and that's what that is. And I think that is just about my favorite semi-automatic rifle, period. Yeah, I think if you uh, just kind of follow the basic rules, kind of crane did when they designed mm -hmm. these where with the barrel twist kind of get the same contour barrel if you want to save some money just get the douglas barrel and then build your rifle around that and then shoot 77 grain through it yeah and you're honestly you're going to be just as accurate and, and do it how you want i mean none of these on the table have m-lock and that's where everything's at now so mm -hmm. if you love the m-lock system or if you love marcus swiss right. on the bottom which everything's moving to Go make yourself like a cool accurized AR-15, make it with your own rules, call it the mod whatever your initials are and be happy with it. The mod D. Yeah, the mod D, the mod Dylan, we're talking about doing some fun oh, stuff. Geez. Yeah, right, some 14 and... more money than guns right now. <laughs> I don't know, man, anything else you want to say about Mark 12s? Uh, it's, if I had one gun I could take with me anywhere to do anything, it would be Mark that 12. one, yeah. I concur, hog guns, you want to go shooting long range with a buddy, it can do that as well. It's just a cool gun. Yeah. If you want some more context on how well they shoot long range or how not well they shoot, uh, stay tuned for episode five of Long Range uh, Challenge, when I'm away at 1,000 yards, where I try to shoot the motto um, on a 10 inch plate. Yeah. Whatever, we'll see what happens. What are we thinking? But, how many shots? What are we thinking? Um, I, I, it's not even a matter of how many shots I think I'm gonna do it in. It's a matter of, I think there's a, honestly, 40% chance, maybe 30% chance I do it at all, which I think is okay. I think that's accurate. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see that in any case, man, Mark 12s, I can talk about them all day long. I'm sure I'll find another excuse to bring them onto the channel some more. Hopefully this sufficed for now. Dylan, thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Cool.